I started long ago in law. Yes, I know you will hear law, photography, compliance, all the works, jack of all trades, master of none. The reason I want to mention the law thing is because in law there's a lot of jargon. And usually when you study the field, it doesn't bother you until you try and speak to someone else and you realize how little they understand of what you are trying to express. Website design is no different. You know, especially when you enter it new, you hear words that completely throw you off. And even while you are busy with it, you will pick up terms that didn't exist before. One of them that I found was being used and I didn't caught up with the times were the word call to action. And I was like, oh, well, what's a call to action? And finally, I realized call to action is basically have somebody click on a button, fill in a form, go to another area of the site. That's what it is, a button or a form. You have to submit something. Call to action reminds me a lot of the US military poster with Uncle Sam pointing his finger and says, the army wants you. More or less that, you know, something that will entice people to take action, like click on a button. The button itself is not a call to action. The whole presentation of that section, like a photo plus a little bit of information and then encouraging a person to click on the button. That is usually the idea behind a call to action. Let's look at the button that comes with Jet Elements from CrocoBlock that is an add-on for Elementor. Now, if you go into Elementor, the first thing you will see under basic, which is the free widgets, there is a button element. So if I go and close all these panels and I will keep saying, I hope Elementor can give us the option to close them. Because if you start adding all these add-ons from CrocoBlocks, you have WooCommerce, JetBlocks, Jet Elements, Jet Pop-Up, Jet, you see it becomes quite a lot. Under the basic, you have the button. And then for the jet elements, you also have a button over here. So if you were to type up here button, you will see both of them appear next to each other. This is the Elementor free version, and this is the CrocoBlock jet elements version. Essentially, no difference between the two. Let's drag them in so you can have an idea of how they look. Go again and type in their button, and then drag in the one from CrocoBlock. And you will see that even though they appear very different, they are at the core the same. They are buttons. You click on them and they take you to some link or something happens. The difference that you will see while we're busy with this tutorial is that the Jet Elements from CrocoBlock does have some interesting animation effects that you can apply to the button. And as we all know how to work with buttons, you drag a button, you style a button, you link a button. Let's do something interesting. I'm going to add a section up here. And now I have to consider, did I load the image that I want to use here? Let's see quickly our media library. There we go. This is a brewery. And what we want to do is advertise the brewery for all the microbreweries and all the beer that they stock there. So I just used this image. Let's quickly work a little bit on that first. Let's go to the layout. Now I'm going to put it on the height and I'm going to say minimum height. Let's leave it at 400 pixels for now. This is my box in the middle. I want it a little bit smaller so I can focus things better. So I'm going to go here to content width, give it 800 pixels. I like that for hero images. What else can we do here? Let's go to our style and then for the image, the size, use cover. And then we are going to put it on the position for center, center. Okay, so these are not microbreweries, right? But ah, you understand we're using this image just to give it that effect. Let's drag in our headings. We're going to use two headings for that from the basic. One is our heading. And then we'll drag in another heading. And then under that, we will add the button. So let's type the button because we're going to use the one from CrocoBlocks, this button element here, and drag it there. A big mistake that many novices make with website, not only website, graphic design as well, is that they use the text and they put it over an image like this and it looks bad. You need to make trade-offs and there are various ways in which you can do it. The first one that I will recommend here is to put a layer, a color layer 
over the image. So right click on the image, go to edit section, then to style, and then we go background overlay. I'm going to give it a warm overlay, so I'm going to use gradient here. And then for this one, let's click here and make it a orange over there. Let's make it, oh, well, orange, 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 orange. We got it there. I'm going to remove it up here. Oh, well, normally I will use hex numbers for that. And this one I'm going to put in on the yellow. Okay, more or less, that's what I want to do here. Let's change the angle a little bit. Uh, I want to put the yellow in the right okay just give it a slight angle and i'm going to increase the opacity so I'm going to make it more opaque opaque means non-transparent you cannot see through it and many people try to keep it very light like like this or something trust me your image is just there for you know decor it's not there to be the main attraction here it is the title and the text that are the main attractions. So increase the opacity. Don't feel shy to even put it at 0.8 or higher. People will see, they will have the idea of what is going on here. Let's go style our text. So I'm going to click on the text, double click on it, inline editing and serving over 30 local brews. And by brews, we mean beers. And then let's go style it, center align it and let's make it white that looks good and then for the topography choose a nice one called princess sophia princess sophia right and then let's increase princess sophia over there and i'm going to add to this a shadow let's do that text shadow i always use a standard text shadow all the time you will see whenever i use a shadow for text horizontal and vertical i give it a three and a three let's add another three in here okay let's go back to that and you may not even have seen it there you will notice it when i increase the opacity of the black you can see it standing out more and this is the second way in which you can make sure that text stand out from a background image the first is a color overlay and then the second like this with some uh, separation with a drop shadow but i'm going to decrease that a little bit good and then let's go and do something for this one here we can add some text like we offer full range testing days what does that mean with a variety of menus available. I'm, I'm just typing this mumbo jumbo from the mind person's taste. Okay, that looks pretty bad. So we're going to style that, also center align it. Go over here, text color, put it on white. And let's use Poppins for this one. I love how we can play around with text and then oh not finished here yet go away let's go away let's go back to topography let me just get all of this away okay topography let's change the size to around hmm, over there wait i'm going to reduce to 400 that looks okay and the line height everything else i think is fine i want to reduce the weight even more no, that's a little bit 300. That's okay. Let's reduce the size also a little bit. Okay. And from here, I think let's add the shadow as well. Okay. So remember my recipe three and three. It always gives a shadow that drops from this side all the way to this side, a di diagonal drop. And then finally, this is now going to be our call to action. So let's click on that. And the first thing you will see here, the content button label text. We are going to say here, book now, because we want people to book a reservation. And then we'll put the link here, whether it's a form or whether it will link to another page. This is what you can decide. Your icon, that is that little circle you see there. You can choose from all these icons naturally. I don't want to use any icon. So I just click here on this X and it will get rid of that icon for me that's it that's the content and then for the hover let's change the hover i'm going to say for the hover something like i'm in i want to go 
And I'm also, let's put in something with an arrow that indicates that I'm in. Okay, I think the arrows are at the top. Let's go back to the top. Yes, so let's go for chevron, this one, right angle. Let's see how it looks. And there you see. This is where things get different between the elementary widget and the one from Crocoblock. Jet Elements is that this one we will have to go into style to change its position. So let's go to settings, hover effect. We have that icon position here. Actually, it's here under settings and we change it to right. And you see now it's on the right. It can even go to the top. That's interesting, but not pretty. And the bottom. Okay, you'll have to apply some line spacing i'm going to put it on the right light that looks good for me content and settings we've got all of that cover let's go to the styling and first thing here under alignment i'm going to center align it and that i think is more or less what i'll be doing here now we go to the plane this is where words get very weird plane is probably just the background let's make it white Indeed, it is. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of that one. Let's go back, put it on white, reduce my opacity a little bit to there. And then I just think I will leave it like that. I'm going to apply a box shadow because we have the shadow for the others. So again, I'm just going to apply the three and three. Uh, we're actually just a video on button, but I'm doing such a long thing over the whole image. Right, and there we go. That let's change the topography for this one, which is our label. Go to color, and I'm going to make that black. Right, and let's change. Okay, the rest, they are all the same. They are fine. Now, let's go back to content. I think it's under content. I have to go check very carefully here hover effect this is the thing where the button in jet elements is different to the button that we find in elementor and that is the hover effect currently if i hover over the button you will just see the color changes but i've got a selection here let's go to fade and you will see when i hover now over it it fades in but that gets very interesting when i choose others like up slide Nice, that's a nice effect. Give you some more slide, slide, upscale. Let's look at upscale. Ooh, that's a nice effect, right? Draws the attention. Top diagonal slide. They get creative over there at Coco Block. Ooh, I like it. Snap. And let's try two more. Right rain. Well, I think right rain. Ooh, what? Let's do it again. Right, let's do it again. Let's do it again. And left, I'm pretty sure left rain is from the left, right? Well, do. Okay, there you go. So we've created this, well, call to action block here, more or less, but I would, of course, add just a little bit of spacing over here. Um, otherwise, it just looks a little bit horrendous. Let's add one more spacer here. Okay, that one I'm going to reduce. All righty. And then I think based on this, I would like to have more area at the top. So just click on that. Let's make our maximum height. There we go. Now it looks much, much better. And this was a long tutorial over just for a button, but I, I often like to just look at things in context and also show you how things can be used. You know, many tutorials that you find online will just show you the button. And when you try and go and do it on your own site, it just doesn't look good because you have to see things in context to understand how they work. And now, 30 local brews have put me in the mood for one myself. This is JP here at Websites for Beginners. Hope you found this tutorial useful. And please, any feedback and comments, leave it below for us. We'd welcome that.